Yeah, great pleasure right now to welcome to the show a woman who has written a really interesting book, particularly if you're in uh, the radio business. They don't have to be. It can apply to, uh, I think, all sorts of uh, industries. It's called There's Money Where Your Mouth Is, Complete Insider's Guide to Earning Income and Building a Career in VoiceOvers. We're joined by a voiceover specialist herself, Elaine A. Clark from uh, San Francisco today. How are you, Elaine? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing great. Good to have a chance to, to talk to you. First of all, let me uh, thank you for writing a book like this. Uh, I, I've well, kind of researched... Yeah, research this kind of topic, and you're the only one, I think, that's written a book specifically. I've seen other books on voice acting, but specifically on voiceovers and, and the way you put it together. So uh, this is the third edition. Congratulations on that. Why, thank you very much. You've been doing this for a while, but uh, I'm glad you put it down on paper, because I think a lot of people out there, particularly now with uh, the way the whole industry is changing, I think they want to see if they can maybe do something like this, voiceover work, right? Well, it's, it's like, uh, quite a good business uh, that you can do out of your home these days, as well as going to recording studios. So a lot of people are having a, either side jobs or they're setting up home-based businesses so that they can uh, uh, do some recording and, and uh, fulfill some of their passions of recording voiceover, either for commercials, narrations, um, characters, audio, audio books, any of those areas. And our whole industry, just the technology of it, obviously, has changed with, uh, like oh, you said, home yeah. studios, Internet now. I mean, you can actually set up your own mm -hmm. studio in your home and email it or whatever over ISBN lines. I mean, that's different than the way it used to be. They used to go to a studio and pay money, or at least the client did, to, yeah. to do it, right? Yeah, and you still uh, do a fair amount of work that way, especially union work that comes from SAG or AFTRA. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be more in that direction, but a lot of the non-union work is, is about recording things at home and, and uh, engineering it yourself and sending it out. So it makes it, uh, it, makes it more accessible to people. Talk a little bit before we get into the, the meat of the book a little bit. Uh, I mean, your background, you've done uh, voiceovers for, for a long time, commercials and, and, and movies as mm -hmm. well. Uh, how did you, you get started? Well, I was a theater major in college, and I was doing some plays, but I wasn't making very much money. So I saw a little class on how to do voiceovers. And so I, uh, after the first class, I said, really, the only thing I have to do is read copy. They give me money, and I don't have to go to rehearsals. This is awesome. <laughs> and as one of my students calls it, you still get the shwing, which you, you still get the sort of the thrill of, of having done stuff when you're finished. So that's how I, I started, and then within um, a couple of years, I was uh, people were asking me how I did it and started teaching, and then it was kind of funny. I wrote my uh, the first version of There's Money Where Your Mouth Is about 15, 16 years ago, and there was only one other voiceover book on the market at that time. It wasn't a how-to book, so I thought, well, I'll just write, go ahead and write this book so people won't ask me any more questions about how to do it. I'll just have it there, and it was kind of funny because from there, there my business uh, my company, Voice One in San Francisco, kind of grew from that. <laughs> So people can say, well, I want to know more. Tell me more. Sure, yeah. I, I grew up in New York, uh, and uh, at one time I went down and uh, spoke to the folks. I don't know if you've heard of Weiss Barron. Uh, they were uh, an agency in New York at that time. This was in the 80s. I guess maybe, yeah, the 80s. Yeah. They, they taught uh, acting, but they had a, a section in there where they would teach you voiceovers for commercials, that kind of thing. But uh, it's, um, it was kind of tough even back then to get information on it. I mean, you, you could find occasionally some articles in the library or, or it was no online then, but books. But uh, you were the one who first to actually put it down, kind of from beginning to end, how you, get, how you start and how you get some work, right? Absolutely, yeah. So I just wanted to demystify the process. And the thing is, well, now we're in this age of communication. Everything is about video and audio on people's websites and and how they're dealing with stuff. So it, it, it's accessible for everyone. If you have your own business, if you're working for a company and you have to do podcasts or whatever it is, the people need to know how to be better presenters. And that's really what we work on so that you can use your voice well. What would be uh, the first thing? Let's say somebody really had no... So your broadcast background, uh, if they want to do something for a website, uh, what, what, what would they do first? But besides get the book, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they can, they can get the book. But that's, uh, and I, what you have to do is to figure out what the message is mm -hmm. and what you want to achieve, because we have to hear things emotionally in order to get it, as well as logically and with authority. So you need to really sort of identify and uh, do some script analysis of what you want to achieve. And that's, what we, that's also what I talk about in the book. Um, and then people will understand why it's being said, why it's being said a certain way. And, and there are two different ways of speaking. One is called reading conditioning, and the other one is speaking conditioning. So the reading, we had typically start louder at the beginning of the sentence and get quieter at the end. Get louder at the beginning of the sentence, get quieter at the end when we see that period. 
And when we speak, we usually start quieter at the beginning, get louder at the end to make sure that someone will get it. And so there's a big intellectual shift that people have to do when they're reading so it sounds like they're talking and just having a natural conversation. Yeah, that's so. one of the toughest things to do, and you can still hear it occasionally mm-hmm. today, listen to radio or TV. Uh, you can tell if somebody's reading, even though they you know, see the script in front of them, and the great ones, you, you don't know if they're reading or not. It sounds like they're talking off the cuff. That, that's the difference, isn't yeah. it? That, that is, and that's a, it's quite a skill, and it's um, it's retraining stuff that you learn from the time that you started reading, you know, see Dick and Jane kind of stuff. So it's, you had all these kudos of saying, you know, that you put your sentences together as a kid as you're starting to read. So it's it's all embedded in your brain a certain way that you have to reprogram it. Now, a lot of people may... A little bit of time. Right. I mean, a lot of people now may say, well, I don't really have a great voice uh, for radio or, or TV, but that's not necessarily uh, the case anymore. I think in the old days, people thought you had to have that kind of deep uh, radio-sounding voice, but, but th- that isn't uh, necessary anymore, right? No, it's, uh, it's not having... Um uh, they used to call it sticking to tape, um, but nothing. everything is digital now, but something mm-hmm. that is unique and interesting about the voice and engages the audience. So that can be a quirky little voice, it can be a, it can be a deep voice, it can be um, just a voice of authority and, and warmth. So you have to figure out where does it come from. So should it be more heartfelt, should it be more cocky? Um, they're just um, different approaches and different styles that they're going to need for all the different types of voiceover work. I know you talk in the book, uh, kind of getting your voice in shape, and, and, and you really have to, do, like a singer, I mean, take care of your voice when you do a broadcast work or voiceover work. Uh, can, can you kind of give a tip or two of what, what you should do? When you're, uh, well, you need to get grounded first. You need to sort of um, find your feet on the ground. Uh, most people do this uh, voiceover work standing up, but some, some will do it sitting if they're doing longer stuff. Um, really sort of get into the right mental frame. We are so used to... Um, multitasking, that it's hard for us just to focus on one thing and one person. You have to act like you're talking to one person that will open you up emotionally, and then connect with them and give them a lesson. Tell them exactly how, uh, you know, you have to figure out what, whether you're trying to be instructional, whether you're trying to be, um, uh, um, you know, helpful, whether you're trying to make them change. So that's the, that's the message that you have to figure out, because everything is about uh, identifying the problem at the beginning, uh, knocking down the problem, telling us how it's, uh, how, here's a solution with what this, you know, whether it's a, a corporate uh, narration or whether it's uh, a commercial saying, here's how you can solve the problem. And the last part is then saying, no, you do something with this information. Mm. You change it. You have a choice to change. So you have to go through those three different sections. And that's uh, how we use our body, how we use our voice is going to help people take in the information without having to uh, think about it too much. So it's about processing in an easier manner. Talking with Elaine Clark, the name of the book is There's Money Where Your Mouth Is. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, the different types of work that is out there. I mean, obviously it's not just uh, television or radio, or internet now, or, or, or corporate work. Uh, you don't have to just necessarily go to a radio station and say, I want to make a commercial. There's other ways to make money with your voice, right? Right. I mean, there there are talking products. I mean, you go into, um, you go to the airport, or you go to, uh, get in a car. And it says, "Your door is ajar," and <laughs> you know that that's one thing, one type of business. You have a GPS system. They'll tell you, you know, "Turn right on the next light." So they have um, uh, their toys, talking toys. Hi, I'm talking Teddy. You know, so they have things like that. And then there's um, uh, you have loop groups that do background voices for TV and. Um, and film, so that you take all the, the background, uh, you, you see a crowd or you see some people at a restaurant and you put voices in those, uh, those extras' mouths so that they weren't saying anything because it would have interrupted the, the major actor's mm. performance. That's interesting, yeah. So there's, there's that whole area. Uh, of course, there are video games, tons of video games, and uh, cartoons. So there, there are many different areas. Like School Voice One in San Francisco, we teach... People, there are several different tracks. Um, um, they have the commercial track, narration, which is going to be corporate or documentary, which is another another area. Um, then we have characters, which is going to be for toys, cartoons, um, video games, and audio books. So that's another area that people who love to read like to get into audio books. 
Talk a little bit about it. I mean, I think a lot of people are going to think, well, I have to live in a major city like a San Francisco or New York, but but now I guess you don't, right? With the Internet, I mean, you can do it from any, almost anywhere, can't you? Yeah, you can. You know, people live all over the all over the world doing this. You can live in Timbuktu and say voiceovers as long as you have an Internet connection. So the other thing is just it, it really does require some training and some understanding of how to do this because especially if you're going to do a commercial, you can, you know, that company is really depending on you to boost their sales. Mm-hmm. If you don't know what you're doing, it can actually have the opposite effect on that client. So, um, so that's why, you know, if they're, if they're going to get into it, there's certain things that, you know, I would suggest training and then doing a demo, marketing, and then, you know, going out there and, and doing stuff. So we have, you know, the so people who are in other areas and can't get to San Francisco to Voice One, they can, you know, contact us at, uh, you know, at info at voiceone.com and get and sign up for um, you know, get some online training through Skype or over the phone. I also have, uh, I'm, I'm powering another company called uh, Internet Voice Coach, mm-hmm. and that's where we have a whole bunch of videos about how to do how to do voiceovers and some blog information, and then it also has all some class information about how to, how to do stuff. Just support your system, because if you're in a home-based uh, environment, you kind of really, you kind of, kind of want more um, connection to the outside world and what people are doing and what their struggles and how do you go about that. But before, we were able to just go into the audition and talk to people and get that information right there. That's great. I know that uh, the Skype thing really has opened up, uh, particularly for online training. Uh, that's a great uh, avenue. Oh, yeah. and, and your company uh, does that as well. And uh, I know people out there that are listening say, okay, I have the talent, and uh, at least I think I do. I have, I have pretty decent equipment, which is important. I don't need to talk about that in the book. But uh, give, mm-hmm. give one tip of uh, how do you get a job? What's the first thing you should do? The first, uh, first thing you should do is uh, to put together a demo. And and market it and uh, be as confident as possible that you're the best best person for the job. And the people you know in your in your in your world will be the most likely to hire you from the start. So start networking with your with your friends and acquaintances, um, and go from there. And then you can you know get a talent agent. You can get talent agents in many different markets. It doesn't have to just be you know in your local market. And then. Um, uh, build a business, start building up clients. So it's, you know, you build one client at a time. It's about opening up a storefront and you're, you know, and you're the product. Yeah, the book will give some good tips on, on that and uh, also a lot of people have questions, union, non-union, you go into that, we won't talk about mm-hmm. that now, but I mean, those are things you, you should know, but uh, uh, I guess the age we're in now is people are more entrepreneurial and this is really an entrepreneurial kind of industry to be in, you can do it on your own or you can work for an agency, but I think it, I think people are now looking for things they can do, if, if not full-time, on the side and uh, voiceover work uh, is that, that type of business, isn't it? You can do it as much yeah. as you want or on the side, right? Yeah, and sometimes you want, you know, sometimes you start out as a, a being on the side and then it becomes a full-time business. That's not a bad problem. Not at all. Or <laughs> you want it as full-time and it's it's a part-time. So it's, you know, it, it sort of takes on a life of its own. The market will tell you what, whether you're whether you're fit for it, whether you, you know, you've, you know, how, how it works. And it's also about being a good actor and an improviser. So the more skills you have in your, in your uh, toolbox, the better that you're going to be and the more work you're going to get. Would you say the industry, uh, as far as job outlook, uh, optimistic about it? I mean, uh, if you're good enough, is, is there work out there? Plenty of work, you think? There is, there is work out there. Everything talks these days. Mm-hmm. Everything is about you know, audio and video. So it's really a question of how someone connects with it. We spend more time marketing than we do performing. So if you're going to record a tag, let's say, for a national, uh, uh, national client, and that tag is only 10 seconds. You can read that tag a whole bunch of times, and uh, uh, you read it, let's say, six times <laughs> a mm-hmm. minute. And then, uh, say, in uh, 10 minutes, you have way more takes than you need, and you're done in 10 minutes. Mm. Not bad. You know, so then you have the rest of the day to yourself. And if it's <laughs> added into those national ads, if it's a SAG or after a or SAG job, then they put it in, put it into the that TV commercial and the web commercial and the radio, and then you start getting these residuals, and that's when you really start making money. That's the magic word, residuals. If you're lucky to get that, you're yeah. in good shape. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, because the other, the, you know, the difference between non-union and, and union work is non-union is a buyout, so they just buy it for a certain amount of time, and then you're you're done, and you don't get any additional money. The other is, uh, you know, some people call it magic mailbox. 
<laughs> you didn't you didn't work that day, but all of a sudden you go to the mailbox and something a check is there for you. And that's what you that's what you want. Passive income. Yeah. That's what you want. Do it once and get paid over and over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it really is a, an interesting book, and uh, obviously, you know, me being in the broadcast business, uh, I really enjoyed reading it, but again, you don't have to be to really get some good information out of it. It's called There's Money, Where Your Mouth Is, Complete Insider's Guide to Earning an Income, Then Building a Career in VoiceOver. We've been talking with Elaine Clark today. Elaine, give out your website or email once again. People get a hold of the book or send you a message if okay. they like. Well, they can send a message to info at voiceone.com. And they can get the book through Amazon.com. And the name of my company is Voice One in San Francisco. That's B-O-I-C-E-O-N-E. Great, Lane. Pleasure to talk to you today. Hopefully we can do it again uh, down the road. But uh, thanks for joining us. Yeah, well, thank you. It's a pleasure. I actually taught a voiceover class in, in uh, Sarasota uh, a few years back. So maybe I'll get back to your beautiful city one oh, day. Oh, great. Yeah, we'll have, to, we'll have to look for that again. Let me know next time you do that. We'll, uh, we'll have you on. I will do that for sure. Oh, great. Thanks, Elaine. Right.